Hello everyone, today I'll be doing Leet Code Bi-Weekly Contest 72. Um, hopefully this contest goes good. Um, if it does go good, I might uh, hit a new PB in rating, I think. Wait, wish me luck. Four zero. I see. I see. Unique positive integers. Um. Um, any order. So the next are uh, three and four. All right, that didn't work. One, two. We won't do that. Twelve twenty eight. Right, submit that. I see. Okay. Um, this seems like I can throw an ordered statistic tree at it. Um, I could use a sorted list, but I'm not very good with sorted lists, I'll be honest. Um, okay, I just I just want to make sure this compiles. Yep, it compiles. And then size. Just size. Do that as well. Do I need to return it mod? No, I don't. Oops, two. Right, I think I need that one. Um, so first, 
and then you can make another one for Y. Um, I think I'm gonna. to t dot hold on key on the position I don't insert. All right, one and four. Be A. Okay, <laughs> I felt like I did really well. I, I mean, I don't know yet, but um, because the leaderboard only comes up 10 minutes, but I was very, very happy with that performance. Um, so I think I have a good a good shot of at least in the top five, I think, if not one or two. I mean, there's insane people on Elite Code, so I definitely won't be surprised if a lot of, if some people beat me, but I feel like I did pretty well. Anyway, um, time to go through the answers. Um, okay, for this question, it's kind of just a brute force. We're just going to iterate over all pairs i and j, such that i is less than or equal to j. That's, uh, that's in this for loop. I'm iterating over all positions of i, and then I'm iterating for all j, which is greater than i. And then if the numbers are equal and their product is divisible by k, then I'm incrementing one to the answer. Um, I'm not sure if there's a better like a, a better way to do this, but um, because this loop is o n and this loop is o n and this check is in o one, um, the total time complexity is just o n squared, where n is the length of numbers, so it's fine. Um, Oh, I actually found question two and question three to have very similar ideas. They're all about numbers summing to a given number. Anyway, uh, basically the key idea is um, if we let the numbers um, be x minus one, x and x plus one, then the sum of these three numbers, um, the sum of these three numbers is always equal to exactly three x, which means that the x must be equal to num divided by three. So if I just set x equal to num divided by 3, then we have our array. And obviously that's only possible when num is a multiple of 3. So if it isn't a multiple of 3, then we just return the empty list. Um, that's all for that one. Okay, here's a different, here's a similar idea. Um, the maximum number of unique positive even integers. So now I don't like the keyword even. Um, it is still decently easy to, you can still solve this using even, but one approach which I like to think about is um, if we divide the final sum by 2, and if we divide all of the numbers in our output array by 2 as well, um, then we're just trying to, if we, so if we divide final sum by 2 and we remove the restriction that we need even integers, then the problem essentially ends up being the same. So for example, if we had final sum being 6, our output could be 1, 2, and 3, and then when we return it, we'll just output double each of those elements that we construct. That means that the even part is actually kind of irrelevant. Um, the only condition is if it's 
if f is odd, then, well, I, I've renamed it to f so I could type it faster. If f is odd, then there's no possible answer. Otherwise, we're going to divide it by 2, and then we're going to remove the restriction that we're solving for positive even integers. We're just going to solve it for any positive integers, and then in the end, we'll just double all of our elements. Now, we need to split this into the maximum number of elements. All right, so now let's do some analysis. Um, let's say in our output array, we have k elements in the, in the optimal array. So the maximum number of elements we can split it into is k. Um, then what is the minimum possible sum of these k elements? Well, the minimal possible sum is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus up to k. Um, that's because we can't have any duplicates, and to minimize the sum, uh, we should just take the k lowest ones. Now, if this sum is greater than f, then clearly it can't be done in k elements. So the, so the largest k, such that this sum is less than or equal to f, will be the number of elements in our output array. Why? Um, because if we let the sum of this be s, and we're trying to reach f, and we know that s is less than or equal to f, we can simply take the last element, which used to be k, and we'll instead replace it by k plus f take s. And then now, since we've incremented the last element by f take s, which is a positive integer, then the sum of all of these elements will be exactly equal to f, and I won't have any duplicates since I only incremented the biggest integer. So my code is pretty simple. I'm, I'm looping for different values of x's. So basically, during this loop, x keeps incrementing. So what I'm essentially trying to do is, first I'll try to add a 1 if I can, then I'll try to add a 2, then I'll try to add a 3, and so on and so forth, as long as the sum doesn't exceed f. And then, to make sure that the sum is f, we'll just take the largest element and we'll increment it by f take s to make sure that the sum of all of them is f. And um, what is the time complexity of this? Well, um, obviously it has to be bounded by the size of the answer. So lead code can't, this is um, proportional to the size of the answer and obviously lead code can't um, expect you to provide an answer which is super long. It has to be good enough and that's why this program is good enough. The other way to look at it is since 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus up to k, that's equal to k times k plus 1 over 2, uh, which is ok squared. So we know that so we know that f is about like k squared in terms of asymptotics, uh, which means that k is about square, square root of f. So it's it's some constant factor um, times the square root of f, which means that the, the maximum size of our output answer is the square root of final sum, and that's why this solution works. Um, finally, for question for the question four, um, whenever I see three elements, uh, a very useful technique which I find is to iterate over the mid of mid iterate over the middle of the three elements. If we can iterate over the middle of the three elements in nums one, and if we can figure out how many of the elements to the left can be possible candidates for the first value, and how many elements to the right can be possible candidates for the third value, and then if we multiply those two values together, that will give us the number of good triplets where the middle element is the current element which we're iterating. So basically what I want to find is for a given y, if I fix a y, I want to find how many x's are valid to the left, how many z's are valid to the right, and then I'll just multiply them together. And this is actually symmetric, so I'm just going to focus on counting the number of x's. So if I want to count the number of x's, um, let's say I'm at this position, I want to know how many of these numbers appear, how many of the numbers to the left also appear to the left of our current y in nums 2. So if I fix my y here, I'm trying to find how many x's elements x are to the left, such that in nums2, x also becomes before y. And the way I can do this is, um, first, if I generate some array pos, where pos x, where, um, so in my code, pos x is the index of, of element x in, in nums2. Um, okay. Um, so basically, um, for a given y, if I calculate its position in nums2, 
I'm trying to find out how many of the positions of these elements in NUMS2 uh, will be less than it. And I can just use this with an ordered statistic tree, which is a sorted list in other, in other, in Python. It's just like some sort of ordered set, basically, um, with self-balancing binary search tree or whatever. Um, if I maintain the set, um, if I maintain the set of the, if, sorry, if I'm iterating through a prefix and I keep a set of um, the relevant positions in NUMS2 of the elements which I've considered so far, then for a given element, all I have to check is how many elements in my set have positions less than my current position, which is essentially what I'm doing here. I'm saying um, for my current position, so here my i, my i is iterating for for the value of y. For, for I mean, so, so yeah, so my value of i is where is the index in nums one, which I'm going to assign to be y. And then for that given i, if I take the position of that element in nums two, I am just looking up in my set, how many positions are less than that. So the order of key in C++, and that will return the number of elements less than the value. And then after that, all I do is I insert my current position to the set. And that solves, um, for a given y, how many values of x are valid. And then I can do, it's exactly symmetrical for the suffix. I just iterate through the reverse. Instead of having a min set, I'll just have a max set and I use the exact same logic. And then once I've found that the number of valid z's for a given y, I will multiply that by the number of valid x's and I'll add that to my answer. And then I'll just return my answer. Um, in total, um, because these set operations take log n time, the total complexity is just n log n. All right, and now moment of truth, time to see how I did. Oh, Yui's too good. Um, he beat me by 28 seconds, but that's still pretty good. So I got second place. Um, in terms of my rating, uh, so my current rating is 3136. And that means that um, potentially this could be a, a new PB for me. I don't think I'll hit 3200, but it will be close. Anyway, that's all I have for you to, uh, uh, you guys, uh, thanks for watching this. Um, subscribe if you haven't, and see you next time.